Before we start, I have to say, we're all thinking it. What? You look hot. There's no way. You look like... I woke up today. You're a certified hottie. I woke up today and I told you this. Mad. No. I woke up angry. Okay. Well, because I went to bed at so late in the night. Well, guess what? What? You should do that more often. <laughs> because you look is it Good. just the hair? I got my hair done. It's your skin as well. I know you got that facial. It's working. Oh, I got a facelift. Oh, the yeah, face. no, no, no. <laughs> no oh, no, you, you misheard. misheard it. I got a facelift. Face Wait, hi. Can you welcome them so that we can yeah, get yeah. the housework in and out of the way? I have to this. say something. Wait, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because my DMs have been full of people in in Albany. And I need to say. Why? Um, I, a couple episodes ago, was like, I'm going to Albany, go get your tickets. You also said another one that was not right. For sure. I, I went on your thing and I was Stop like... Stop going on my website. Well, I was like, wait, is she going there? It was probably <laughs> Albany because... No, you This said, is the only one it's happened to. No, it was a difference. You said like St. Louis or... And Springfield. Those are all true. No, you said a different city and I was like, she's not going there. Okay, but listen to me. This is what happened. Um, I said Albany. Mm -hmm. Posted it, put a link up for about a day, right? <laughs> then the episode comes out. Our agent says, hey, I'm so sorry. Sometimes this happens. You did get bumped and we have to cancel the show. He's like, we'll come back some other time. So I want everyone in Albany to know that like I, the show got moved Ooh. out of my control. Can I guess? I'll come back. Yes. Guess who I was bumped okay, for? Am I, I supposed to do this on yeah, a podcast? Who cares? Who gives a shit? shit? Okay. Okay. Three people. Yeah. Well, it's either Fluffy. <laughs> Great guess. Great guess. Great guess. No, so it's not? Not fluffy. Is it in that vein of comic in the sense of age-wise? Age, I feel like older, but not like crazy old. Not like Ron White. Does it start with an R? Yes. Does he have a famous daughter? Yeah. Rob Schneider? Yes, I was bumped for Rob Schneider, who's doing a full fucking weekend and took my Sunday. <laughs> that sucks. Took my Sunday. I'm like, Rob. But that's what happened. So everyone well, who's been messaging me and they're like, what happened? Like, did it sell out? It didn't sell out. They canceled. And I was bumped for Rob Schneider, which sometimes happens in this industry. It definitely happens. So no shade, no tea, except for Rob. Well, this feels personal. This well, feels personal. I've heard I mean, some things, Rob. Of all the things to be moved for. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Right in the time, too, where my algorithm is giving me his daughter doing podcasts, being like, he sent I'm... me to Fat Camp and is kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, and then that, I give okay. an email that's like, Rob Schneider actually bumped, bumped you. your show. I think he saw who was going on Sunday. He goes, He's, get her out of here. Absolutely not. Get her out of here. App, get that. They, them, fat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. Hey, that's not my words. That's, that's Rob, Rob Schneider's, Schneider's words. <laughs> So that's what happened. I'm so sorry, but I will be going to Fort Collins and Denver and Springfield and St. Louis, but not Albany. <laughs> and I'm I'm so sorry, but you can go to my website to fuck. get the tickets. All that to be said, fuck Rob Schneider. <laughs> that is unbelievably funny. Isn't that crazy? I'm so sorry to hear that. Also, of all the cities that people actually, I didn't realize that people wanted to see me there. Albany rocks. Until you Remember pull we it. Did? We loved we Albany. We loved Albany. Very um, Really good Indian food. Was that where that was? Really good oh, Indian yeah. food. Remember? No, I think we went, it was um, Mediterranean, or it might have been Israeli food. Remember? We had baba ganoush out of nowhere, and we were like, this place rocks. It did rock. I also want to, we have our tour dates out. Yes. You can go find them at twodikesandamike.com. We still have a lot of tickets for Salt Lake City. Yeah. Because we are there on a Tuesday. Yeah. Also, and that's okay. And that's okay. We're there on a Tuesday. Uh, we're there on a Tuesday, but Salt Lake City, SLUT rocks. show up. Um, also, the Brooklyn, the second night, is yeah. still there's still tickets available. San Francisco, if we can absolutely blow that out. We need to. It's a We're at a gigantic theater. We're at a gigantic theater. Yeah. And also, you know, Nazara's family is from there. So if we could really make me we look really good. We really need to sell out. It is yeah. the Palace of Fine Farts. And then we do end in Ohio. Ooh. Two different cities in Ohio. Yeah, we got Cleveland again. Yeah, you know Cleveland. I love Cleveland. Do you know that somebody mm. may... You know, I... Okay, if you recall last time we were in Cleveland, I kind of spiraled on stage, kept saying Cleveland, 
I think first time it was a joke and then it was like, oh, like cleavage. And then I was kind of in your, it. Your aunt was there and yeah. I was like, I don't want to be too dirty. Then made me act yeah, cleav- double dirty. Cleavage is maybe one of the most tame words. For sure. Cleavage. For breasties. Um, somebody DM'd me. They had made a screen print on that's in the in the font that looks like a sports team it yeah. says cleavage i love that a lot mm-hmm. i love that quite a bit yeah so all of the cities like we tour only twice a year so you're gonna want to make sure to get those tickets while you can we'll put up a graphic go to two and then all the tour dates are right there and we're gonna hook up this time so well, you're gonna want to see that live and i don't want to be whatever can we talk okay about but this? it is right before i get, get married, married. Yeah. so it is kind of, and if anything is kind of happening, like how everything's kind of happening, Listen. after certain shows, I do go out to strip clubs. That's because true. Because it's the kind of <laughs> yeah, last yeah. hurrah. Yeah. So feel free to come out to a show before I know. Mackenzie has her last run at me. <laughs> run at me? <laughs> run at use fun. Ah! Run at use fun. Also, before we get into the size of your cup. I ordered wrong. Before we okay, get into I the size. ordered si- wrong. Before we get into the size of your cup, if you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. And your sister just came out as pan or whatever. It's your duty as a queer person to listen to this podcast to tell other queer people about this podcast because so much queer content is atrocious. Yeah, and go rate and review the podcast. R and um, R. Rate, rate and, and review. review. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because when I say R, I'm usually saying something else. Yeah. Like R and M. Yeah. Which is very Tol- like Law and Order SVU. But this time it's rate and review. <laughs> I'd love to talk about the size of your cup. Did you say welcome to the episode? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Two Dykes and a Mic episode. I'm Mackenzie Goodwin. And I'm Jane Fonda. I wish. I wish. I'd love to meet Jane Fonda. I feel like we're... Actually, I have. Excuse you me? bitch! She was awesome. She walked into the room. Yeah. Everyone was like... <gasps> She's so She was cool. wearing all white. Yeah. She's thin. She's yeah. thin. She's half of me. She's half wig. I'm worried about her. I am worried, actually. But she's so powerful. You know, she's out there doing stuff. It's weird when, like, actresses hit a certain age and they are all 80, pushing 80 pounds. I don't want to be weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Too late. I was chugging the Kardashians. I haven't been able to sleep for a while. My therapist says I'm going through a little bit of a <laughs> manic Wait, time. I'm also in a manic episode and I haven't been able to sleep for, like, three weeks. Yeah. That's why I'm I'm really mad. Yeah. <laughs> I love when we're both up at the same time, which means. Weird. Anyways, <laughs> so you're watching the Kardashians. I that's one of my shows that I can put on when I can't sleep. Yeah, because they just they're just gonna be like talking and doing nothing. I know, but I miss it. If I'm being honest, I they love were, watching they straight were a people. Comfort show for, for me. sure. It is like America. You're not watching straight people. Right. Oh, yeah, right. You forget. I for, you forget. The odds are in our favor. For sure. Yeah. Anytime I see a large family, I go, there's a couple there's, of ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, even, uh, you go, okay, because a lot of, you know, a lot of hyper-religious people are like, you better be fruitful and multiply for the army of the Lord. I go, you're making a lot more of us than you think. A hundred percent. Especially like the generation below us. Please. 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 The odds are ever in our favor. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> are you fanning yourself with three, dude? No, with two. Wait, why are wait, we like my this? Hair. Why are we? Look at my hair, Ken. This is for you. I love it. The length of the mall is getting there. I okay, love wait. It. I was watching Kardashian. Yeah. Jane Fonda shows up. Because Kim is an activist and people yeah. aren't talking about it enough. No, I think people are talking about it enough. No, they're not because everyone hates, people hate women so much that you forget that Kim Kardashian is actually an activist. I don't. That's all I think of her as. Really? Because I'm a feminist. Yeah. All I, I literally all I know of Kim Kardashian is that she's out there doing she's the doing Lord's it. work. So she went to a, uh, I think a prison, not a jail. And yeah. they had, and Jane Fonda has a, basically a program when you get out of the system mm-hmm. to help kind of learn different skills and kind of get reacclimated that. to having being in society a life outside and i'm looking yeah. at jane fonda and i'm going first of all that woman's 80 pounds maybe she's really tiny but she's very powerful no she's the most powerful woman i've ever been in a room with how, besides how did you Chris end up jenner in a room how do you end up in a room with the fond and when i worked at the academy awards she was, she there. was there did she, she have an essence she had an essence and she came in the room. Do you know the um the, that cartoon that wears like the white cap and it's almost like a... Like a duck? Like a detective. Yeah. That was what she looked like. Very cool. It was so bizarre. Yeah. But yeah, she came in with a with an 
essence. I sometimes see women of that age, mm-hmm. of that weight, yeah. and I fear that they're going to be mean because my mean grandma is that was that age well, and size. Well, they're always hungry. They're is always that what it so is? unbelievably hungry. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why models a lot are mean. They're kind of walking around, ice coffeeed up. That's yeah. all they drink is iced coffee, cigarettes. For sure. And lollipops. Yes. So it's a lot of sugar, a lot of caffeine. Yeah. And then nicotine. For sure. So they're like... Fuck you. You know, like they do a lot of. You know, this reminds me of something else, Kenzie. If I may. Kenzie. You know, I'm like sober. Yeah. So and and getting sober during the pandemic and now we're out of it. There's still a lot of things that I'm experiencing through the eyes of somebody who is like still kind of. I guess it's not new to sobriety, but like there's still certain experience. Like going to your first wedding sober yeah. is fucking crazy. Yeah. Like it is a like I am like, oh, I'm dancing yeah. only. I'm only dancing because you don't have to go to get drinks, drinks every yeah. 14 well, you seconds. You still be drinking water. <sighs> I'm not drinking water. Okay. Because I'm dancing. You still want to hydrate. But I this morning. Also, do you remember like when I first got sober and then I realized that dinners are awesome? Yeah. As I Love wasn't eating dinner. dinner Love a dinner. And I was like, dinner's rock. Like, sobriety is kind of opening my eyes. You know what also? Tapas. Going out and getting, like, six to seven plates with your gal. Yeah. Expensive. Expensive, but but very fun. And I didn't realize you you can spend more money on dinners when you're not spending all your money on on booze. Yeah. And I would never eat because all I would eat were menthol cigarettes and whiskey. So I was never eating. I hate this. And I was on Adderall, which makes you not... Anyways, whole situation... This morning, yeah. not only am I up, just kind of like waking up, instead of waking up in a complete panic of still being drunk, Yeah, I wake up, I look around, I'm feeling like alive. I you know what I mean? This. Kenny, I, and this is a little bit of Nazara's influence okay. because she knows, did you know that, did you know that certain fruits have a season where they taste better? Yeah. Does everyone know that? I th- I mean, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Because I had... then what they would have to do is they freeze them and then ship them. Well, they still are. You can still get them year round. You know what I mean? Like you can right. still right now in the summer go buy a Brussels sprout. It just is hard as fuck and doesn't taste good. Right. Because a lot of it is frozen. So it's frozen. A lot of them are. Yeah. Okay. The avocados, I know when you could when you cut them and they're a little bit more grainy yes. inside, it's because they've been frozen. And I was wondering because I, I thought it wasn't freezing. I thought it was like MSGs or some type of growing whatever. The front of the grocery store has yeah. the best fruit. Anyways, I wake up. I'm I'm thinking to myself, so grateful to be alive. Nazara has famously filled our fruit basket with a bunch of fruit. Way too many. Yeah. I cut myself. Cut? A white. Oh, I think I you cut. Had... Oh, sorry. I, for myself, Got for it. my breakfast, I cut up a white peach. Apparently stone fruit are in season in the summer. And I eat it, Kenny. Mm-hmm. And I'm literally almost in tears, grateful to be able to experience a morning fruit. Yeah. A white peach. Also, I get why they fuck with it in that movie with those boys. Okay, that's a, they just do a regular peach. But I know what you're talking about. Peaches are unbelievably good. Have you tried a nectarine? Yes. They're insane. Have you tried a plum? No. Good God, a plum. Really? Good God, a plum. I mean, it's so good, dude. You got it. Listen, fruits are amazing. Here's the thing. I think it's the little things that you get to have when you're awake. Yeah. And alive. Yeah. And a little manic that makes you go, I guess I'll eat a hundred plus. <laughs> Wait, what were you telling me about? Um, um, I have something for you, Kenzie. You've been calling me Kenzie recently. It all comes around. Kenny boy. Kenny boy. Go Do you ahead. know what's so funny? What? I was in Portland doing a show on my own, missing you. Yeah, I miss you all the time. And people kept asking where my other half was. And I was like, Nazara's at home. She works. And they were like, no, where's Ken? <laughs> and it was so cute. Wait, because people, you know I think, think that you are in the green room waiting for me to get off stage when I do an hour. Which normally I am. Normally I'm always there. Yeah. But it's funny because, like, I am your other half, but I'm not your better half. Oh, that's cute. I feel like Nazar is your better half. All right. And you're my other half? Yeah. I'm the other one. That's so cute. Imagine you would just come with me when I'm headlining and just, like, sipping a <laughs> tiny drink. The, I didn't order this. What? Did, yeah. Okay. Well, no, a cortado is that. Just so you know. Fuck. A cortado is like a double shot. With in just a, a, li- a dollop of You oat? asked just for a little bit of oat. That is a cortado, a hot cortado with a splash of oat. This is bullshit. I listen. I don't know what I want coffee wise ever. What you want. 
and I can I tell you? Yeah. It's an iced cortado shaken is with a I little want. bit of oat. This is bullshit. I love it looks good on you though. I want to say thank you for everyone who's listening right now. God, I just love you, our people. You're in your powerful moment right now. I'm not I'm just tired. Straight women are fucking wild right now. I love them. They are. There's st- I'm like, okay. Okay, Kenz, I have to tell you something. Yeah. Because it was one of those moments where I went, I know I'm having sex right now, but also I'm thinking about how funny this would be to tell my best friend. Mm-hmm. Is that right? That yeah. can't be right. Do people do that? Yeah, yeah, a lot of or people maybe, do. Or maybe because we're comedians. Like, as as you kind of live and experience your life, there's a little part of you that's like... I mean, the yuck, this... a couple weeks ago when that yuck thing happened, Yeah. I was like, in the moment, I was laughing so hard and I was like, I gotta tell Ray. Yeah. So that's yes, friendship. I think it it is just friendship when you're in a moment and something insane happens, you even go, if you're naked with your wife. I gotta tell my bestie. I gotta my bestie. tell my bestie, yeah. Okay, so you know... For my butchlerette, you yeah. gave me candles? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they were candles um, for the audience. They are candles that you melt on your partner or yourself. They are yeah. specific to their pleasure candles. They, they're, yeah, like what, hot wax type of thing. Yeah. Um, it was white, pink, and orange. Yeah. And f- just this is kind of a sidestep, but I would love to know if you were going to use those candles, yeah. which part of your body would you want them to drip on? Probably back or buttocks. Interesting. Where would you go? I said thigh. <laughs> Throat. <laughs> no. <laughs> thigh. Front thigh or back thigh? Front. No. I'm so sensitive here. Yeah. That's why I wanted it. <laughs> no, it would burn through my skin. Okay. I'd be so... taken to the ER immediately. <laughs> I was like, do you ever just get in the mood sometimes where you're like, I want to use everything we have? Yeah. And then sure. you pull out every single toy. Nothing's charged. And you don't use anything. It's all dusty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's covered in sand. <laughs> no, lesbian sex. Here's the thing. People love to be like, does that even count? People being straight like bigots. Mm. Does that even count? Here's the thing. Straight sex or er, gay sex is everything. Yeah. It's all of the colors. It is the Olympics. There's too many things involved. There's too many events Literally, I was in lesbian w- sex. Yes. I was watching the Olympics and I was like, there's so many f- new sports that yeah. I was like that no one cares about. No one's here to watch this. No. And I was like, this is lesbian sex lesbian sex There's is so the whole things. menu yeah it's everything and straight sex is only it's the one uh track and field yeah okay yeah so i i was like i don't know i've been getting in like i'm like i'm not sleeping and i'm thinking i can like fuck my way out of it so i pulled out every sex toy that i could think of which by the way we still have so much lube from me do you remember when we yeah, got all that lube buckets of lube yeah because I remember being like, I don't need it. You keep it. And I did. And you were like, I need it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Our man. friendship's fun. I said, thank you for all this lube. Best that co-worker. <laughs> co-worker. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I'm so hot in here. I'm dewy, dude. Anyways. We're both I go. Ca- I go candles. She goes, candles. And you know what's funny is that my partner... Who will remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. She remembers things better than I do. And so she's like, you don't like, like, you've tried these before. You don't like it. And I was like, but Kenny gave it to me. That's so sweet. I know. Thank you. So, you know, in the valley. Did you have the mask on or not? I didn't have the mask on. I'm working up to it. (laughs) I can't wait for the day for you to try that, like, hood on. (laughs) It's so funny. I'm, I'm waiting. Okay, so I was like, let's just do the candles. Like... It might be super fun. Like, let's try. Like, maybe. And, like, maybe I'll like it now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I didn't like it before, but maybe I'll like it now. Yeah. And she's like, okay, babe. Like, whatever you want. And, like, thank you so much. I face her. Because on the poster or the box, it does have the person with their ass up. Yeah. So they're doing it on I the was ass. Like, it would feel fun. I was yeah. so worried it was going to drip into my crack. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Position yourself where it wouldn't. Well, there's no way. Gravity is going to pull it's it just... in. <laughs> I was so worried. Is that what that syrup song was about <laughs> never mind leah cut that no, leah. Leah. leah listen to me leah, please keep the love of god keep mackenzie saying sarah <laughs> <laughs> leah 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 listen to me wait leah you can leave this in but do not leave how i said that woman's name <laughs> but how do you pronounce sarah Alice? <laughs> Borellis. It's Borellis. There's no way it's it Borellis. It is Sarah Borellis. That's insane. Dude, you <laughs> sound like my grandma. And she's passed. 
I love Girls 5 Eva. Uh, me too. But what is that woman's last name? Sarah Bareilles. <laughs> I sometimes when I close my eyes, I see her face. I'm so no, into I her. I love her so much. <sighs> Dude, Paula Pell's been watching my stories lately, and I'm like, That's I awesome. gotta act right. I love Paula Pell. Okay. Huge fan. Same. This is a Paula Pell podcast. Say that three times fast. And she'll we'll summon her. We're a PPP. Why are they remaking Beetlejuice? Pia- Sorry. Paula Pell podcast. Paula, Paula Pell podcast. Paula, Paula, Paula Pell podcast. podcast. She's here. <laughs> okay. I was worried about doing it on my ass cheeks because I didn't want to fall into my crack. I also have it sensory fall. issues. It okay. would drip. Right. And that. I'm, what am I going to have now? Wax in my crack? Great. Guess who's not turned on? <laughs> Me for once. Fair. Fair. Okay. I will say fair because if you if you burn your crack, that's a hard place to put ointment. I'm, uh, you're making all the right points. And I also just like, <laughs> I want to have fun. I want to have a nice time. I want to be like, tur- I want to like experience life. I want to live. I want to feel stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I am so, I have a lot of sensory issues. No, I know. You don't want to walk around with gauze in your crack either. No. 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 <laughs> and like, I'm already like, I want, even like, yes, last night, Nazara like put eye cream on my under eye, mm-hmm. which I didn't put it on myself because I don't like to touch it. And I immediately like, have you ever seen a dog put on rain boots yeah i was doing that with my face like i have i don't like the way stuff feels so i was like don't put that on my butt please sir i said to my lover (laughs) and so she's like okay like let's try like your leg and i'm like perfect my leg's gonna be fine it's like less sensitive and it can't fall into my crack from there you're wrong that's not no no no. (laughs) boy were you wrong so in our our we were in the room which is rare yeah and in the valley in August, it's about 109. It is hot. For everybody not living out here, it's unbelievably hot. It's hotter in the valley than the rest of Los Angeles. Because you also don't have central AC. That's right. No shade, no shade. No shade, no shade. We but, have nothing. Yeah. We no, don't have anything, okay? It's just the, the houses were built for not this weather. Right. They the weather built, has changed. The weather has changed. Some so would say I have all, globally. Just so to paint you a picture, a friend of mine has donated to us mm-hmm. their like standing AC thing that like the tube goes out. Yeah. I also have a ceiling fan that's you have on a window high unit and a ceiling fan. And I also have the big kind of like it looks like Dyson but An it's off brand oscillating, okay? Mm-hmm. So we're getting up top, side, side oscillating. We're getting three It's a lot of wind. A lot of wind. It's a lot of wind. A it's a wind of, tunnel. Okay? A lot of wind <laughs> for a candle toy. She lit it and it blew out, God bless her, a half a dozen times. <laughs> so he goes, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Blows out. And then it's it's like, are you afraid of the dark? Every, <laughs> every like, and she, oh, and God dude. bless, God but bless she was both like, of us for still, up. I'm sitting here, Kenny, fully nude except for sports bra. Don't be a fucking freak. You I'm know not, me. Listen into it. And I'm just watching her, like, this beautiful woman, like, both of us being like, we're gonna... We're really going to do this. We're going to use this sex toy no matter what. And it got blown out. Even when we're like, it's working, like we're holding it. I'm like Stop. trying to use uh, like, like try, you know, like a smoker trying to like yeah. hide it. And we didn't get a single drop of wax. You could have just moved from to a different room. You should have just. too hot out there. Too hot for a candle. I'm like, we're, we can't. All right, then wait till Christmas time. Wait till You're Christmas right. time. Do it again when there's You're less right. wind. By the third time, I went, LOL, I can't wait to tell Mackenzie how hard we tried to keep this lit. I bet it looked like a music video in there, though. I bet your guys' hair was just... <laughs> My bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we I'll didn't start the fire. <laughs> Years ago, there was a music video that was, like, filmed in an airport. And I remember it was, like, it was, like, a girl group. And they were in an airport, and their hair was, like, flowing in the airport. And there was one comment that always I'll remember forever. It goes, damn, it's hella windy in that airport. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. It feels like pussycat dolls. Yeah, yeah. Do you think good. Nicole S? Another hard last name to pronounce. Well, I think, doesn't she go by Nicole S? Because it's so hard. What is it? Schlechter. <laughs> like Jenny. Jenny Schlechter. I think it's like Schlesinger. Is it not? I think it is. That feels right. I can't believe you said Sarah Bareilles so wrong. Sarah Bareilles is how Ooh. I thought it went. She's my, she has become my like number one celebrity crush. She's so hot. And she's, I don't know how that even happened. She's unbelievably hot in Girls 5 Eva. She's so, mm-hmm. I like yeah. almost, I posted on my story, black with just text on it. 
another day where all I can't I can't stop thinking about Sarah Bareilles. And then I was like, what? I posted it one second later, deleted. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> Were you hoping she'd see? <laughs> no. I was just like, I got to get this off my chest. I have to say, there's been some really cringe celebrities recently posting Instagram stories. Yeah. So obviously meant for one person to see, yeah. but they post it for everyone to see. Yeah. And it's been getting... Oh. I think celebrities are in a really tough time right now because <laughs> they're getting more and more out of touch. Yeah. And they're not aging. Like, they're not maturing because they're famous. Yeah. And nobody tells them that, like, hey... Don't post um, don't do that. cryptic shit on no, your Instagram stories. No, 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 no. But so they're not, like, getting the memo. It's so bad. Mm -hmm. It's been getting real bad. It's been getting... I'll, I, I've been getting my popcorn, though. I'll <laughs> yeah. say that. I've been going, keep it going, honey. Wait, can we do some gay news real quick? Should we? Yeah, I have gay news. Okay. Let's get into some <gasps> good, 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 good gay, gay news, news news. Ray, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, we had the ending of the Olympics... And on the last day or the second to last day, the women's soccer oh, yeah. or U.S. football won. They won the gold. And it was an unbelievable game. Did you watch? I was in New Hampshire. Why? I was a groomsman in one of my best friend's weddings. I saw because you Snapchatted me that you yeah. were watching it. And I was like, oh, shit, is this the one? This is the one. And I was so busy. I don't know if you know this. So I was watching and I was like, God, this girl looks like a person that I know, like that I've grew up watching. Her her name is like, oh, it's Trinity Rodman. Ooh. So I Google her. Hot. She is Dennis Rodman's daughter. Wow. She won the gold medal. Oh, my God. I had no idea. Their family is filled a with like, a legacy athlete. A legacy athlete. Wow. I thought it was so cool. She rocked it. There were so many oh amazing God. plays in this game. And this is obviously gay news because women's soccer is like unbelievably queer. Yes. Half of the team is gay. And last or last Olympics, we kind of biffed it, right? And they got a new coach and now we're back. Yeah. So the new coach, she is she's the coach for Chelsea Football Club in the UK. Oh. And she is like apparently the coolest coach. She made them all go out and do karaoke together. Yes. She did a lot of like team bonding stuff with oh, them. Oh, that's beautiful. Apparently she's unreal. And she got us the gold medal. The I mean, obviously huge. we have amazing players, but... She really, like, got them Corralled. together. Yeah. Wow. That's so fun. Unbelievable. I'm so proud for women. I know. And uh, Megan Rapinoe was in the stands along with Sue Bird and sitting next to them, Allie Krieger. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Cool to see everyone together supporting. I felt like that, too, when team. Simone Biles was mm -hmm. doing her events yeah. and you could see other major, major, like, goat women of their sport I think serena williams was there yeah yeah unreal i think maybe that's why i've been so into i don't know what it like women right now maybe it's the olympics women are so i think it's the olympics the WNBA is on an upswing yeah women's soccer here in the u.s is on an up like people finally are giving a shit yeah which is nice to be around it's a fun kind it's awesome. of there's just been a fun energy lately yeah. And I think it's it's a really fun time to get to look around and be like, you know, when you're like a lesbian, you like support women, you love women for so long. And like, it's so fun to be like, we're all fucking here being like, fuck yeah. I mean, how many times have you seen like if U.S. women were their own country for medal counts? Oh, yeah. We would get like number four. It's insane. Like it's nuts. It's a really cool no, I know. time. I'm so excited for the next one to be here in Los Angeles. It's going to be unbelievably Gay, yeah. queer, yes. fun. Because yes. Billy, Billy closed out the Olympics in the Billy, Billy, Billy closed out the Olympics with um, what song was it? Hold on, I wrote it down. Oh, she did the greatest. So I thought it was going to be an up tempo song. It was kind of a slow one. Yeah, I think she thrives in the slow tempo. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think she thrives in the slower tempo. I agree. I agree. We'll talk about that on a different episode because we have a couple things to say about that. Yes. But how exciting. No, it's so exciting that it's coming here. I think it's going to be awesome to have so many. I mean, the Olympics were already unbelievably queer, yeah. but it just keeps getting gayer and With, gayer. When it's, whenever it's soccer, mm -hmm. like women's soccer, it does feel like a lesbian win. Like I do feel like this is for the queer community. I mean, field hockey, rugby, yeah. any of these sport, WNBA, yeah. like Brittany Griner looked unreal on the court. Yeah. It was awesome. And Diana Taurasi, I think it was six gold medals now. 
six gold medals. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, so she beat out Sue Bird for the most gold medals for the WNBA. Oh, or see, women's basketball, I should say. Not that's WNBA. so beautiful. Yeah. It's a really Unreal. fun time. Yeah. I love Diana Taurasi. Me too. She's been on the Mercury forever. So I grew up watching oh, her. Oh, that's your team? Yeah. I know you're a sports dyke, and I love that about you. I can't wait for the Olympics to be in Los Angeles. I'm going to go to, like, every sport The Olympics. I'm already saving. You know what people save for college funds? No. <laughs> I'm saving for my Olympic tickets. I'm going. You have to buy tickets if we live here? Yeah, of course. It's not just free. Oh, I don't understand it. You got to buy tickets. I think there's like a wait list. You no. can join different wait lists. Yeah. But I heard in the Valley, they're doing BMX and stuff. Like okay. they already are showing where things are going to be. BMX is also very gay. Yeah. Remember Pink? Of course. Charlie's Angels? Of course. Moto- Motocross, the Disney Channel original movie? Hi. Of course gay. I do. Queer. Queer Awakening. Yeah. Hi. Stupid. That has been it for <gasps> good, 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 gay news, news. I thought I had another thing I wanted to shove up the podcast. You shove up the podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hair is long. Hold on, let me polish her off. There's so much liquid today. It's almost too much liquid. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Sarah Borelli Alice. Oh. I say it really again. say it again. What? Sarah Bareilles. Why? But it's not spelled that way. I don't make the rules. Is it again. French? Oui. Is it French? We. Oui. <laughs> Is it French? Is it French? Okay. Can we do an ask a dyke, please? Let's get into an ask a dyke. Also, if you have an ask a dyke or something that you want to hear on the podcast, you can. Send it into the Dyke hotline, leave us a voicemail, or you can email it over to two dykes and mike at gmail.com. Or, and this is actually the fastest way to get it to us, <laughs> you could shove it up your ass and then we go, oh, mail, and we get mail it. Mail alert. It's really fast. That's yeah. the fastest way to do it. It's just shove it up your ass. Yeah. Got it. Okay. It comes straight to us. Just kind of like when you write to Santa Claus in the North Pole. That's exactly how it gets here. Through your ass. <laughs> and then we go, oh. You've got mail. Yeah. So <laughs> so do that. Okay. If you don't mind. This ask was sent in by, oh, anonymous. <laughs> Great. Okay. Hello, mac and cheese is I what they called me. Wait, you're mac and cheese or are you mac and I'm cheese? <laughs> I think it's mac and cheese and Raquel Scallion. That sounds right. I do like us being mac and cheese, though. I do feel like we are mac and I'm cheese. I'm giving mac and you're I'm definitely giving, giving cheese. cheese. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I recently started dating again after a long hiatus. I matched with a girl on Hinge and have been on a few dates with her. She's fun and sweet, but I'm not very attracted to her. Oh. <gasps> I just realized I have to tell you something. Okay. Off pod. Great. Oh. <laughs> I remembered something insane that happened this weekend. Dude. I know. I was going to tell you in the car and I forgot. Sorry, everyone. Can I can't just... tell you, though. That sucks. Can we do it on a live episode? On the, for the patrons? Yeah. Okay. So if you're a, to- a $10 or more patron, we do monthly live episodes and Mackenzie kind of goes there. I really, okay. And I want you guys to tell me it, if you think that this is crazy because somebody did something insane in my life and I need. Yeah. We'll have to get the sharks on it. Okay. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> I went on a date with a girl on Hinge and have been on a date with her a few times. She's fun and sweet, but I'm not very attracted to her. Mm. And am I being a bit too vain or should you actually be pretty attracted to somebody who you're dating? Thank you so much, Anonymous. Okay. I want to first get out that there are different types of people Mm -hmm. who experience sexual attraction differently. Yeah. So like there is a a huge group of people Mm -hmm. who like that type of thing comes last or never. Yeah. Like there's a whole community of people. Are you talking about sexual attraction? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking like the ace community. I'm talking like demisexual. I'm Mm -hmm. talking about people who that is the last thing that comes. Yeah. And you might be one of those people and it doesn't mean that it won't ever come. Either that or, I mean, but they didn't say that that's who they are they're just like i'm not very attracted to this person and this is what gives me pause as and i want i just wanted to say like if you're like oh shoot i kind of feel that way like it's not necessarily that there is something like wrong with the relationship like that might might be kind of the way that you experience attraction yeah that being said the way that this was phrased does give me worry correct because yeah 
you should or not should, but like it sounds like you are used to feeling it and it's missing from here. Correct. And I think that for you and for a lot of relationships, Mm -hmm. that type of attraction is necessary is a huge part of it for me that's a huge part yeah of a relationship i can get a lot of my needs met but from my romantic partner i do want them to be attracted to me and i want to feel sexual attraction well and i'm sure that that person also wants you to feel an attraction to them yeah you know i think it goes both ways do you think it can grow do you think if you have not none it can come yeah absolutely i think attraction can grow in a relationship or you can meet somebody and find them immediately attractive But I think that that is a love versus lust thing, too. Interesting. I think that this is a sexual attraction. I think this person is like, they're fun, they're sweet. There is no physical attraction. I find uh, in my whole life, like, I'm very, I'm, like, way easier to be attracted to people. I Mm -hmm. find myself sexually attracted to people before I, like, know who they are. Like, I'm not, I'm way easier to kind of, like, get ignited in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like... If it isn't there, for me in particular, I don't really find myself, like, growing it. But yeah. I have it for, like, so many people. And so many things make me yeah. get excited physically about people. Totally. And so many things make me be like, oh, I would love to – I want to learn more. I want to be around you. I want to touch you. I want you to look at me. I want you to laugh at me. That, like, if it's not there, for me – and I think it, it's different for everyone. Like, yeah. some people that does grow. Totally. But for me, like – I there was only been a handful of times where I haven't felt it and I have been like maybe it'll come and it just doesn't yeah but that to me is more of a friendship then yes exactly and you'll know I believe too like you'll know right away when you are physical with that person oh you'll know yeah your body will tell you yeah. and, and and it's okay to trust those things and yeah. it's okay to be like we have such a good time we laugh they're smart they're funny they're attractive but like I just don't have that that like sexual pull and it's okay to just then be friends i agree i agree i think that's the best advice for this yeah yeah because even if you're out and you're having fun and the person is sweet i can tell by the email already you're not like this person isn't it's not going to go much further sexually yeah but it's okay to make somebody a friend yeah i don't think that that's there's anything wrong with. i don't think so either i've had a lot of like dates where there is no chemistry at all yes there's no sexual attraction and that's then you go home and you say sorry I didn't see a spark. Right. And that's too, we're like, they were like, I wonder if I'm being too shallow. There's not, you're not being shallow, but if there's not no. chemistry there. No. That happens. you can find people attractive. You can find people not attractive. And you can find that's people okay. attractive and still not have that spark. A hundred percent. Most conventionally good looking people I do not find attractive. Right. I'm all like, what's your, in your soul. I am attracted to like how you make me feel about myself. Mm -hmm. If there's like a chemistry, like in the conversation. Yes. More than like physical attraction. And I'm physically attracted to almost everyone. And then with. And you hate all personality types. I hate every personality. Yeah. So it's almost like, shut up. (laughs) No. Okay. Wait, I'm watching Love is Blind UK. Yeah. Are you? No. It's. I'm watching. Tell me. Slow horses. You got it. Yeah. Yes, you are. I'm really into slow horses. You are watching slow horses. It's so on watched- Apple. Yeah. I'm getting into Apple series. Good. Because everyone was like, go watch this Jake Gyllenhaal one. Go watch this Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal one. Have you seen it? No, I want. But I you keep hearing it. I have it. to. Yeah. I don't have fucking time to. I'm okay, so Okay, can upset. I tell you? Can I tell you? No, don't. No, no. no, no. The, I'm going to tell you. Don't. It is an eight part series. I know. It should have been four. Okay. It should have been four. I gotta I'm sorry. watch it. Here's the thing, Mackenzie. I'm what? fucking like between betwixt to between trying to plan a wedding before we you go don't have on time tour. To watch television. No, don't. I, if I I'm miss TV, honest, but I do go to. I still go to see horror movies though in the daytime. As you should. I think that 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 series is overrated. Okay, but may I say? Not gay I'm watch so Love is Blind, which is kind of in this vein of like if what you is attraction? form this yeah. relationship with somebody before the physical comes, you like them, you have the same goals, the relationship is working sure. on paper, it makes sense. But you get in person yeah. and then can it sustain on its own? It's right. like very similar. And like you see so many times this show, Love is Blind is like cis straight people Mm -hmm. so like there is it's different like in the queer world we all know it's very different but like i want more people to trust the because you said it you were like i'm i'm really more in tune to how i feel when i'm with someone yeah i think like a lot of times when we're dating 
we're really focused on like that other person. Mm-hmm. Do we want the same things? Like, can this work or whatever? I think more people need to really look, take a second and be like, do I feel okay, good around happy, this person. Yeah. good when we're together? Yeah. Because I'm watching a lot of shows and also listening to a lot of friends of ours too, mm-hmm. that they're describing how they're feeling and I can watch their heart rate go up yeah. or I watch them get like You shouldn't be fidgety. having anxiety you, mm-hmm. when, you're, when yeah. you're with the person that you're like courting or yeah. trying to get to know. So like just trust like if your instinct is kind of like, I don't really know why that like spark's not there or I don't really know why like I kind of get anxious when we're together. Like really take a second and be like, how is my body physically reacting to this person? Or I don't know another big one is, and I've had it when I've dated certain people. Mm-hmm. Um, you get nervous to bring something up around them. Yes. Or you get nervous to I don't know bring them around your friends because you th- think think something might happen. I think if you're nervous with that partner, that me that there's that's a big red flag. Yeah. Like I feel around Erica so unbelievably myself, mm-hmm. happy. Yeah. I feel safe. Yeah. I feel very comfortable, silly, and silly, and loved. Yes, and I felt that from like very early Day one. on. Yeah. Yes, and that is the stuff that you really want to hold on to because yeah. I I remember too. I've I've had relationships that when they, I feel like it should be going to that next comfort mm-hmm. place, and instead I just like completely like. I stop talking or yeah. I feel like I can't really be yourself be myself yeah. or I feel like scared and right. you're like in your head you're kind of like oh I wonder if that's like you know what that is but it's like you have to take let your body will tell you yeah. your body will know check your heart rate look at your aura ring look mm-hmm. at your apple watch look at your blood pressure response yeah. to your partners that yeah. you're with and be definitely there was just this person on the love is blind UK and I was so grateful because you know they they pod they propose and then they in this one they go to like an island in Greece for okay. their like honeymoon. Yeah. And this woman was you know picking the wrong guy and they proposed, they met in person and then it cuts to most of the couples in Greece and then she they just in a 30 second thing were like sorry spoilers but she was like I just I don't know what it was. I didn't feel safe. I felt like it wasn't right and she's like I just didn't go and she's off the show and Good. I was like thank God. Listen to your body. Yeah. you have to listen to yeah. your body and yeah. it's okay to not force anything and it's okay to just it i would much rather not go to greece mm-hmm. than feel unsafe for a fucking second okay i will say that a lot of people when they write into us when they write in these ask even in your their emails or their voice messages you and i say all the time sounds like you already know the answer yeah and i think most people you your body your subconscious you know the answer you know what's coming yeah but you almost want to hear it from somebody else but i think it is like listen to your intuition yes always women we always <clears throat> have like that i mean everyone has it but you have that thing in you, you. but i it. think too when you when you're chugging a relationship and when you're going really quickly and when yeah. you're excited you don't have a time to check and i'm i'm this way too i'm like working on it with like my therapist but i leave no space for thoughts as yeah. like an extrovert and as somebody with this adhd i leave very little time to feel how i'm feeling to really sit and back and think about this situation i'm working on it yeah. and like i think that we all sh- should take a second to be like am i okay yeah. <laughs> do i feel safe With this person, Mm -hmm. do I feel like I'm myself? Because a lot of times if you're not taking a second, if you're just like constantly dating or next, next person, next person, like I did that too. I would go from relationship to relationship to relationship. Didn't realize I was doing the same thing over and over again Mm -hmm. until I took a little bit of time. And so it's okay to give yourself time to be like, do I feel like I'm myself in this relationship? Yeah. Because a lot of times you you don't know because you're going so fast. Right. But like take it. Take a second to breathe. You got to like really check on your heart rate. Yeah. Because trust, you do know. Your body does know if you give it a second. A hundred percent. Yeah. You don't need to go to Greece. No. Nobody needs to go to Greece. I do though. I want to go to Italy so bad. That being said, do do you think that Sarah Bareilles gives a shit about me? I think she could. Here's the thing is I think she could get there. You think she she could grow attraction to me? She could grow attraction to me. Is she straight? No. I don't... I love her. Not with that voice. I feel like that voice is very queer. Do you ever see a celebrity and you're like, I know you? Yeah, she's, there's something about her. See, usually it's influencers. Usually it's people who do like a a job that talks right to camera. For me, I don't know a single influencer. Sarah Bareilles. 
Well, I don't know any any influencers. No, either, I don't but... mean like actually. I'm like when I see an influencer, somebody talking direct to camera, yeah. I go, I don't know that person. Like, or like podcasters, you know the ones that we connect to. Dude, I got the ick for one. I know. I also got the ick for it. It I'm, seems n- like the whole in- the other one. Yes. Interesting. I know. I saw one TikTok of this b- this person that Ken's and I both love, and I just went, Oof, nope. Interesting. And I'm out. Wait, what was it? You have to tell me off pod. I can tell you because it's still very vague. Uh huh. But you know the the trend that's like pink scrubs and a puka shell, pink little scrubs and a puka shell. Oh. It was that, and I went. <gasps> you know what's so weird is that I. I used to think that I was such like I got icks for people that I was dating all the time and then I would be out. Mm-hmm. But it turns out once you find somebody that you love, there's weirdly nothing that they can do that ick you out. There's nothing that Erica can Isn't do that, that crazy? can ick me. Yeah. Actually nothing. What is that? It's love. No, it's freaky. That's so funny that you got the ick for her. I know. I feel bad. I'd love to fly in and see if it happens to me. I'll send you the, the TikTok do. and Please let do. me know if you get it as well. All right. We have a bumble fumble. This this is a bumble, and they're asking if they were wrong in the situation. Which you is were good. next. No, hey, <laughs> tell me. Hi guys, love the show. She, her, my brother thinks I was wrong, but I don't. So I matched with this girl, and during conversation, she mentioned she loves sushi. Great. Yeah, she's wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, I eat it, but I honestly don't know any good sushi spots where I live. So okay. I, I initiated the date, but I said, hey, honestly, I don't know any spots. Why don't you pick? I'll pay. Love. That's I awesome. I actually love that. Yeah. You're doing great. Uh, I figured that way we eat somewhere she genuinely likes, and it takes me to uh, – it's sometimes – and it takes that sometimes awkward part out of which of the two femmes pay on the first date. This is great. Yeah. I feel like – I great. also think if you ask somebody out – You pay. You pay. Um, okay. She said she was down and agreed to Sunday since she had it off, but she never actually told me a location or a time when I asked. Hate that. I really hate that. I, now I'm upset. Mackenzie and I are so in line about this type of shit. Can I tell you? Yeah. And Eric and I have talked about it recently. She was like this in the sense of, I would be like, I would always be the one making the plans, setting the time. Itinerary. I'm an itinerary bitch. Yeah. She would never do it. One day I was like, all right, you're going to plan this one. She never planned it. I called her and was like, if you do not plan this date, I'm out. Wait and express your needs. Uh, Yeah. Fucking show me some effort. Please. Jesus. Okay. (laughs) A few days later, it's Saturday. We're texting during the day and she says she can't wait to see me tomorrow. Okay, great. I know, but still. Mind you, she hasn't told me a location. Or a time. Yeah. I woke up Sunday morning and I saw a missed text from her at 1 a.m. asking if I was awake. Oh, Oh. (laughs) fuck. Okay. I texted back at 8 a.m. saying, no, I would not been awake. Yeah. I fell asleep watching games and I um, and asked if everything was okay. Silence. Fast forward. It's 3 p.m. I don't know where we're meeting or the time. I text her and say, hey, if you're still down for sushi, let me know. I'm upset. Silence. Fuck. Now I'm sitting in my house hungry, wondering if I should eat because I have no idea if I still have a date with this girl. Fuck. And I feel like an idiot. Yeah. This is tough. I finally eat and I go to bed. Okay. I unmatch her and delete her. Uh, the, I unmatch and delete the text string, so I figured I would just move on. Okay. She texted me at 3 p.m. the next day saying she was sorry. She was really tired. And she still wanted to meet up and said she would make it up to me. Mm-mm. I was not having it. I texted back. I said, don't worry about it. Good luck. I hope you find what you're looking for. Great. My brother thinks I'm being a dick and I should have given her another shot. No. I think it would have taken little to no effort to shoot me a text saying, hey, I'm exhausted. Can we reschedule? Even at 1 a.m. Yeah. So I would have understood. Uh, instead, she made the choice to stand me up knowing I was waiting for her, knowing I had been waiting for her. I also find it odd she never told me a location or a time. It felt like she never intended to meet me. Am I being too harsh or overthinking it? Let's discuss and then there is a P.S. Okay. Um... Here's the thing with a first date. Yeah. You have one chance. You have one shot. You you go one. You go in and you have to make a great first impression. I, and and this is- How are you blowing it this early? Please. This is coming from (laughs) some, I worship women. Yeah. Women to me, I feel like I am a piece of gum stuck on the shoe in compare, I am wildebeest compared to women. Like I am obsessed- and, like, there is almost anything I am so blown away by. Yeah. However, when it comes to a first date, 
You have to show people how you want to be treated. You have to come in with 200% of Please. you. You can't be coming out of the tunnel, let's say it's a game, and eating shit right away. You can't fall out of the tunnel. Like, okay, are you make doing it- like when you enter a stadium? Yeah. <laughs> Great. You know when the flames come out, yeah. the cheerleaders are on the side? Yeah. You got to get through dun, that. Dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. You right. can't fucking eat shit. Exactly. No. Make it onto the court, you guys. No, I I think that the way you handled it was so perfect to a T. You did exactly what I would have done. And these are two, by the way, this just shows you two different lifestyles yeah. happening right now. Yeah. That's never, this is not the time where you guys would overlap. You might in the future, but right now this person I couldn't is agree staying more. up late. They're obviously drinking or doing whatever and then sleeping through the Sending time. Sending you an are you awake no. text at 110 in uh-uh. the morning? They're not ready. No. They're not ready. You're ready. Yeah. You're, you're ready, ready to get to go sushi. Out. You yeah. are, like know what you're doing you have to find somebody who matches your freak this person's not ready to match your freak no this person is like this is how i would have dated and i and how i would have cut somebody off yeah. who is not giving you respect and this reminds me of when i was drinking you're I, the other i would one. sleep through dates i had girlfriends scared locked out of my house being like we were supposed to meet at seven and i was passed out drunk so yeah. like it reminds me maybe this you're person, in two different periods of your yeah life. you're not yeah. they're not ready and that's yeah. okay and you're not being an asshole like an a- your brother being like oh no you were too harsh no 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 you're respecting it's yourself a and your time beautiful boundary yeah that's it's awesome it's really really cool to be like I see like to see where somebody's coming from and being like that's not what I want yeah it's great. Unless they're really hot, then I would go back for more. No. No, right. No. There's no level of hot right. that would let me let somebody treat me like this. Exactly. What your auntie Ken said. Ken. But yeah, I think that's right. You can't. No, this the, you did great. And all, honestly, I love the I don't know a good place. Why don't you pick the place I'll pay? I love that. What a Every, move. Everything Swap. about you is very hot. awesome. I just like, yeah, you can't. There is something very. Uh, your body won't forget how somebody makes you feel on a first date. That's a first try. It's just rude. It's I'm not waiting right. for you. I, you're never going to catch no. me waiting for somebody. I'm never going to wait for anyone no. except for Nazara, who did get a flat tire on our first date. Second date. Technically, Erica waited for me. I was 15 minutes late. I can't believe you were late. But I was I was running late. I never run late. What happened? I don't know. I remember something happened so and I was weird. running late. And she was like, I'm always 15 early. Do a couple laps yeah. around the bar yes. in my car. Weird. Super weird. Nazara's car got towed on her way and we lived three hours apart so that it made her like 30 minutes late or whatever and she literally was like i know you don't do lateness yeah and she was like i can show you she was like come she made me was like come to look at my car there's so chalk on her windshield from being towed that's and i was like kick rocks prove it bitch (laughs) kick rocks i'm kidding we fucked a lot (laughs) we did all right there's a ps in all seriousness kenny we did did. (laughs) i'm sorry i let me bring it back down to earth we did. We kept trying to turn those candles on. It kept getting blown out. I said, okay. not in my crack. Wait. Okay. We have a PS. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this is, um, okay. Love the show. Love you guys. Uh, PS, Mackenzie almost killed me. Fuck. Was I driving? <laughs> did I almost hit you with my car? I'm a late listener and I discovered your show this year. So I've gone back and I started listening to the pod from the beginning. While I was listening, I was taking my vitamins, which were these three pretty large pills and a normal size one all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I threw my head back to swallow. And at the same time, I heard Mackenzie say, I turned the corner to see what my dad was watching on YouTube and it was hot girls lighting their farts on fire. (laughs) Well, it turns out you can't laugh and swallow at the same time. Ah, I started to ah, choke. ah, 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 I'm unwell. Wait, my dad does watch those YouTube videos. My dad's, uh, listen. Your dad is. Two weeks ago, we talked about. An how issue. He told us. He told me. <laughs> okay, Mackenzie is a dentist dad. My dad is, a, he's a dentist. He's a, he's a crazy person. And yeah. I love him to death. Yeah. He's crazy. He's unhinged. He's unhinged and he's getting more and more unhinged. Yeah. I would say he was hinged when he was watching those fart videos. <laughs> And it was literally, he would type into YouTube, hot girls lighting their farts on fire. It is nuts. This is the man yeah, that who raised, raised me. Right. He recently told me that that what I would now consider a full a, a full blown lie. He was like, I used to be able to tell when, when people gave cunnilingus because their tongue muscle was so big. Multiple other dentists and hygienists have now come out of the woodworks. And who said, listen. that's not true. They're like, that's not true. Your dad's a liar. And now I'm like, why would he say that to me? Well, dad, boomer dads, do they just open their mouth and say lies? My dad's such a liar. Yes. 
And I will say I get that from him. I know. I love to boldface lie to people. I know. It scares me. I love you. You bitch. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> see you at sushi. Oh, see you at sushi. Uh, that has been it for our Bumble Fumble. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, that was very fun. Sorry that you almost died, but thank you for listening to the pod. And sorry my dad's weird. I, that's so funny. The fact that we made it to be this level of, like, functional in society Mm -hmm. is all despite our weird dads. It's because of our mothers. Thank God. Thank God for our mothers. Thank God we had moms who weren't watching those type of videos. Yes. Yeah. Mothers who just go, Mark. Yeah. John. John. <laughs> wait, we both have fathers that are um, Bi- yeah. Bible dads. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What are they called? Oh, come on. <laughs> Not Proverbs. No, come on. Chapters of the Bible? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? Yeah. John and Mark. You know. Interesting. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Jafar. Jafar. I have been upsetting people. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> that has been it this week for Two Decks and a Mic. I'm Mackenzie Goodwin. I'm Rachel Scanlon. Go do something gay today. Bye bye. We love you. We and and we'll take you to sushi.